and then let's look at 105594. So if you actually use the actual year or use 75, 80, 85, 90, well then what's going to happen there is your, your y-intercept is going to be different. You can still use your equation to make predictions, but your y-intercept is going to be different. And I don't really care, but I would recommend try and take the book's advice because they're just trying to make things easier for you, really. Okay? Um, and this one about 18,076, you're not going to have that answer, but I would say you're going to have something hopefully fairly close. Yeah? Um, can't we put it in point slope? One, two, one, slope um, let's do slope intercept. You could have nine. Um, now, <coughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, this one. Remember, the other day we talked about interpolation versus extrapolation. Do you remember what the difference was? Extrapolation is exit outside, in, in, interpolation is inside. So by doing, by finding 2003, are you doing interpolation or extrapolation? 2003 is right here, so that's interpolation. Okay. Can I see yours real quick? Okay. Okay. Okay, um, I just want to look at one thing here. Um, so, does it fit pretty well or not? Uh, somewhat. What would you predict its R value to be? Like 0.7? Like 0.7? Okay, 0 0.80, something like that. Okay, cool. 8. Let's take a look at 8. 3.07. X plus 32.71. Um, and your slope, I'd say somewhere between 2.2 .2 and, and 3.8 maybe. Okay. And your y-intercept is going to be different, especially if you didn't follow their advice and say um, um, use the year since 2000. Okay. Um, predict the number of campsites to be rented in 2012, about 70. 2020, about 94. Okay. So, and again, these might be off a little bit, depending upon how well your line really fit it. Um, so these, honestly, on a quiz, what I do is I take 12 and I plug it into your equation and see what you should get. Like say on this one, if your equation was a little off and you got like say 90, I'm not going to say hey, that's not right because it's supposed to be 70. I'm going to take a look. Did you use your equation appropriately? If you did, you'll be fine. Okay, 10, 10, 10, 10, by hand, um, uh, y equals 9.8x plus 28.79, so 9.8, let's keep that between 8 and 12, between 8 and 12, okay, um, honestly, this one doesn't fit very well at all. I don't think it fit very well at all, do you? And actually, if you think about it, it shouldn't. Because the sales rank of jeans and the price of jeans. Okay, what it sell for. And when you go to the store, do you think the absolute cheapest jeans are the ones that always sell the most? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. How do they get This one right here? You can't really measure that because... So, so you're asking about B? Yeah. They just use their equation and plug in 12. Okay. And that's what I'm talking about right now. I, I don't think this is a very good real life um, representation of um, how to use this correctly. Because honestly, um, the cheapest jeans are not going to be the ones that sell the most and the most expensive ones. Sometimes, you know, it's like, um, say, you might go to your uh, might go to your mom or dad. I know, um, you know, girls, they're all these interested in the ones that, okay, get me ones that have extra rips in them, okay? Or get me ones that have the extra beads on the butt, okay? That have all these different designs, okay? You know what I mean? And those are going to be more expensive. So, um, but yeah, this is not the greatest example of a way to use this. If you have reservations about it, you probably should. 
So, anything that you were grossly miss uh, uh, off on your slopes or something you want me to take a look at real quick? 10, can I see yours? So we can see where you made your mistake. Um, can I see your graph? Can I what? Okay. Other side? On the bottom. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay. So this is Truman's graph. Okay. And this is number 10. He has the point. He's using two points. 880. I'm glad you, glad you shared this with me. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. He has 880. That represents his line pretty well. And, um, and 9... Nine, 975. 975. No, you had 775. I'm sorry. Okay. So the problem with this, actually, you didn't do anything greatly wrong. I would say that um, in, in picking your, this, this one is just not a very good application of a linear, linear graph. Because look at those two are so high. So what they did, they just made their graph a little steeper. That's why the slope was so different. But, but for yours, what I would look at for a quiz, I, was, I would look at, did they scatter plot it right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did they draw a line that fit it pretty well? Um, I'm not going to give you something that has stuff like this. Okay. So if you would ignore those, I'd say it fit pretty well. Did you pick two points that were on your line? Yeah. And did you write your equation? Yeah. And does your equation look like it, looks like it works? And actually, look at this. 5x plus 40. On my graph, what should 40 be? The y-intercept, and it is about that. So it shows that, hey, he's on the right track. Okay, so actually, and in, in, I'm glad you said something because on 10, if your slope was off quite a bit, that's, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Because what they have, 10, 9.8 or something? Yeah, so if you're around 5, I'm actually okay with that. Okay, I'm glad you said something. Oh, you can shake your head all you want at me. <coughs> Think it's going to make me change? No. Okay, so anyway. Any questions on that? Seven. 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 I'll tell you what, I've already looked at yours once. Let's look at his one. Okay. Oh, okay. So, I see your scatter plot. Your scatter plot's not bad. Um, looks like you tried several different lines of best fit. For, um, okay, first of all, there's a couple things I would tweak. I'll tell you what's good about it. What's good about it is you've got everything labeled, okay? Um, and, and um, I mean, your, your scatter plot looks good. I would probably make it a little bit more elevated because see how these points are all on this side up here? I'd probably go through those a little bit better. So that's one thing. But the big thing that's an issue right here is these two points that you picked. Their points need to be on your line. No, the points have got to be on your line. Because no matter how you draw this, if you pick those points, Here's the line you're finding the equation of. You're finding the equation of that line. Is that what you want to find? No, because it doesn't fit it very well. So you need to pick points that are on your line. Pick points that are on your line. Okay? Because you want to write the equation of your line, not just picking two data points. So if there isn't... You don't have to pick data points. Don't pick data points. Pick, you know, like say on, on, on this one here, you've got, okay, 30, what was 30? 30 gives me about 19, so my point would be 30, 19. Okay, and then another one here, I'm still using this one right here, 10, what the heck, 10, 10, 7. And there's your two points here, right, your equation with. Okay.
hand it over. Okay. I'm going to give you a little pop quiz, find out where you're at. So you'll need a straight edge, which you should have had for your deal anyway, so you should have somewhere. shouldn't show that to me. So here's what I want you to do. Um, and then I'll give, I'll probably sign it up for her. Find a, pick your two points. Show your work, find your equation. I want you to predict the R value. Okay, we talked about that yesterday. And then I want you to, I want you to tell me how many might they sell at a price of 35 bucks. Okay. And then after we're done with that, then, um, go ahead. There's going to be our assignment. Good examples in the book. They want to see those. For you guys, I'm going to um, do a couple of examples after we're done. 